Um, we got a handful of things we need to talk about, uh, not just with the Bengals game, but going forward as well, because uh, there has been some changes to the team. We're going to get off with the biggest news of the week, and that is the trade for Joe Flacco. Why Joe Flacco and why making the trade now? Uh, Vitor, go ahead and talk to us. Why do you think they did this move? Well, honestly, I feel like Joe Douglas knows he made a mistake by not signing another guy in the offseason. Salah basically said today that they tried to get Flacco back, but he wanted to go to Philadelphia, understand him. He, he, he prior to the season, would think he had a, a much bigger chance to start with Jalen Hurts there than with Zach Wilson here. But the Jets should have been more aggressive to try to get a veteran quarterback for Zach Wilson. No doubts about it. And right now, this Flacco move, because since the Jets just said that White's going to start, tells me that Salah, Douglas, and LaFleur think they need an experienced guy in the room, clearly, because they would not have signed Flacco to be the backup for White for a couple of weeks and then do what? Just circle around the facility? No. They think his presence is going to help Wilson in any way, in some way, because if or not, they wouldn't have traded for him. They would roll with Mike White and Josh Johnson. But this tells me that the Jets trust Mike White to, to just command the team for the, last, for the next two games, because short week against the Colts, we'll start Flacco in two days of preparation, maybe. But still, I feel like this is a move thinking long-term, in a sense, eight to 10 weeks, and maybe getting Flacco back next season and letting him be the mentor for Zach Wilson that we all said in the offseason it was needed. The loss of Greg Knapp, you know, sad, tragic loss of Greg, Greg Knapp had a huge impact on this team. I feel like those yeah. guys were not ready to start the season without Nap. And it's just like someone, I think either of well, either of you guys tweeted it at me. It was like overcorrection by Joe Douglas, right? Yep. He needed to get Flacco here because they need a veteran presence. I feel like Flacco's move was much more about the veteran presence than winning these next two games. Yeah, I agree. Um, I the, when I found out that they wanted to re-sign Flacco in the offseason, this made more sense to me. And I don't want to completely excuse it because I don't necessarily think it's the best move. I think it's a necessary move, but it's a move you've been forced into. Still, the fact that they wanted to keep him makes me feel a little better that this wasn't a completely reactionary panic move. This was a guy yeah. that they already wanted in their building, that they had plans for, that Joe Flacco wanted to sign with Philly. They didn't have any control over that. Now they had the option to get him in a trade when they really need a backup presence. I understand that. My issue is once you realize that Flacco wasn't going to come back, you needed to find somebody else if you knew you wanted that backup presence. If that's what you wanted, if you wanted that veteran presence in the locker room for your young quarterback, or even potentially for both of your young quarterbacks, you needed that. You needed to find that guy. And so my thought would be, who would be available that knows the system? Because that very clearly matters to them. They, if the guy doesn't know the system as a veteran, they're not going to bother because they want him to be there to teach the system and the timing and the verbiage and, and not have to worry about learning all of that to be there to help the young quarterback. They want guys that know what they're doing in their system. And off the top of my head, the other guys that were available would be Nick Mullins, who isn't that experienced to, yes, as a veteran, but not in the same caliber of Joe, as Joe Flacco in terms of being a veteran. Nick Foles, who has experience again as well, more experience than Mullins, but didn't quite play in any system that would be exactly identical to this. Similar schemes, but not exactly the same. And the one guy that I would have called is Josh McCown, because Josh McCown played under Jeremy Bates with the Jets when Sam Darnold was a rookie. And that's yeah. basically the same offense as this. Jeremy Bates came from Denver under Gary Kubiak, which is the exact same place that Joe Flacco was with and with Gary Kubiak in, in Baltimore. That's why they said they wanted Flacco was because he had the Kubiak experience. And then Scangarillo in Denver was from Kyle Shanahan. It's the same, same thing with Jeremy Bates. And you've already seen what Josh McCown was like in your building. Maybe not the exact same guys and the coaches that you have right now, but you by all accounts know that he was a quality guy that enjoyed his time there. I would have gave I would have gave him a call and I would have seen if he wanted to come in at the very least to be on the practice squad, because I think he could have been the perfect veteran quarterback presence for Zach Wilson in this offense. If you didn't get to resign Joe Flacco and now you have to have an overcorrect correction. And that's exactly what this is. It's an overcorrection because you've been your hand has been forced. And if you end up having to spend a fifth round pick for Joe Flacco to be your backup, that's a bad trade. I'm sorry. It's not terrible, but it's not good. It's bad trade. And well, we can talk about everything that's led up to this point. But now Flacco's on the team and he's not starting. He's going to take a week to get up to New Jersey from Philly. 
and he's he won't be starting. Mike White will be starting this Sunday. So what is his role going forward? Is he just going to be the backup? Is Are we going to cut him once uh, Zach comes back? How, how is this going to work out? Because I, I, I just see another mess on the horizon. Uh, what happens if Mike White plays well? Is so Joe Flacco just going to be sitting on the bench for a six round pick? It, yep. it all just screams mess, and I don't see it ending yep. well. I feel like they're going to keep tree in the fifty tree. It'll be it. Maybe, maybe get White to the practice squad, but feels like they really like him. But it, I, Salah said today in the press conference, we, we want to keep three quarterbacks in the fifty tree man roster, which is not fantastic, but. In this situation where you're trying to get Wilson the reps, Flacco the experience around, and you want to give Mike White the backup rack reps when needed, it's, it's the answer for the Jets. So I, I feel like that's what's going to happen. And it, it's odd. It's odd. Maybe next season they part ways with White and roll with Wilson and Flacco. Maybe already now they part ways with White to place him in the practice squad. It, it's just that, 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 that was one of my main issues with the move. It's just odd timing. Right now, the roster is set. The Jets are carrying two quarterbacks. Now we're going to have to carry three. Or we're going to part ways with White after he was on the team for all that time. It's just odd. Nothing ever comes easy with this team. It's always just a discombobulated, piecemeal strategy. That yeah, never this really- week was very disappointing for me in a yeah. sense that Sunday was the worst game plan possible from both LaFleur and yep. Robert Sala. And I just felt like on Monday, the Jets were creating for Flacco. Like, what? Is this a thing Joe Douglas would do? It was like, this was a week, maybe the first week I've ever questioned this new regime, honestly. Yeah, they deserve it. I, I think they absolutely deserve to be questioned after this week. And I'm not saying fire them by any means. I think we need to be patient with everybody on this team, including the front office, the coaching staff, the young quarterback, all of it. I, I think patience needs to be the key here because the 49ers let's remember had the second pick of the draft and drafted Nick Bosa in their first year under Kyle Shanahan. And the next year we're in the Super Bowl. Things can change quickly. Things can, once players get used to the system, it can happen fast. And that is what the coaching staff has been saying and they have evidence of it. So I'm not going to sit here and completely just say, tear everything down. It's a disaster. And you know, there's nothing that needs to be said about that, but they do deserve to be questioned. And Matt, you were talking about the topic of what happens with the quarterbacks. And I honestly think that Mike White is going to start this week. I think Joe Flacco is going to start the next week until Zach Wilson um, is healthy. I think after Joe Flacco is uh, done being the starter and Zach Wilson is back, they are going to release Mike White. And I think the the reason they're going to do that is they said they wanted three quarterbacks in the roster. Salah said that again today. They wanted three quarterbacks on the roster, and that's why they brought in Flacco. I don't think they're going to keep four. I think Mike White is the sacrificial lamb. I think they've realized the mistake that they made. And I think that if they sign Flacco and in the offseason and kept him like they planned to, that Mike White would probably be on the practice squad, if not replaced by Josh Johnson. And I think they like Josh Johnson on the practice squad because he's mobile. And so when they go against mobile quarterbacks, they already have a guy on their scout team that can replicate that quarterback. Uh, they don't have to yep. worry about having, you know, Mike White, who is a pocket passer on their scout team. And then you're going against Josh Allen twice a year and you need a guy that can move around and scramble and be a threat on the run. Josh Johnson can do that on the scout team. I think that's why he stays in the practice squad. I think Mike White is going to start one game and then be on the Joe Flacco's back up until Wilson comes back. And when Wilson come back, I think he's going to get cut. Can you imagine if Mike White has like a really good game and he pulls out a win this week? No, I actually can't do that. I I, I I honestly I'm a a Mike White fan. Yeah. I believe in White. No, I don't. But honestly, (laughs) I think he can play well. Win, I don't think Jets will win, but I feel like White can put up a good game statistically. Like 20 for 30, 220 yards, one touchdown. Basically, this with a bunch of check downs to Michael Carter. And anytime he throws over 10 yards, it's going to be over the receiver's head and picked. Possibly, possibly. That's what I saw against New England, as yeah. I saw a handful of times that it was noticeable how much less talented he was than Zach Wilson, where yeah, easy completions, it's, it's where he had, yeah. yeah, he had receivers wide open for easy completions, and he just went right over his head. The interception to Kyle Duggar, which I still don't think was an interception. I think the ball was on the ground. That's beside the it point. Not. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't think it was either. But uh, regardless, that was a bad overthrow. 
And and I think Mike White is it's clear that he is. I, I don't think there's a chance that he's going to have a good game because I think the Bengals offense is so strong. And that's going to be what we're going to get into next, that they're going to be playing from behind like they usually are. Mike White's going to be forced to pass. Greg Van Roten's going to be forced to pass block. I think it could be really ugly. I don't think he's going to play well enough to to warrant hoarding off Joe Flacco. And I think the Jets know that. And I think that's why they traded for Joe Flacco. Yeah. I, the only way I can see him having a good game is if Michael Fur and company have a change of heart and how they look at their game plans and somehow yeah. change their game plan to exactly what it should have been the whole time with Zach, with quick passes, uh, man beaters, using more, a lot more. And getting away from these uh, two tight end sets, if they start doing exactly what they should have done and they start looking better as an offense, uh, it, it might turn some heads, but it'll piss me off. I, I, we, me and Peter talked about this, how if they all of a sudden figure things out with Zach not available to them, that's that would just uh, irk me to, to no end. Yeah, Vitor, you yeah. actually uh, you made the point where you were really saying you were hoping Michael Ford doesn't start calling plays like he doesn't care and actually start calling better plays now that Zach Wilson isn't playing. Go ahead and elaborate more on that, because I think it's a really interesting point. Yeah, I feel like LaFleur is he, he is overthinking, just like Wilson, you know, when he sees his call shit and when he game plans, he's like, man, you only put Zach in a bad situation. He might make, mis- make a mistake. His head might spin. He might struggle for a couple of games because after the Patriots game, we saw trauma traumatize Zach Wilson, and Lafleur just wants to avoid that. He just he just the, simply does not want to traumatize Zach Wilson again. And he's basically overthinking his play calls. That's what I think. And if White, man, he does not care about Mike White. Honestly, quite frankly, he doesn't care if Mike White's going to overthink. He doesn't care if Mike White's going to get traumatized. Mike White's a backup quarterback. He's not the franchise. Zach Wilson is the franchise. So he's just going to call the offense. He's just going to call the offense. Hey, go quick game. Hit it off. And Mike White can execute the offense. I honestly feel like Mike White can have a Nick Mullins type of game with the 49ers. A guy that might keep them in the game and is not just, he just simply isn't talented enough to win it, but might just keep them in the game to the end. And honestly, I feel like LaFleur might call his best game for him because he he, he will play, he, he'll call it without fear of hurting his quarterback. This is the worst thing as a play caller. When you're calling plays and you don't trust your quarterback or you're afraid that your quarterback is going to suffer from executing, it's going to make him overthink and his head spin. With White, he doesn't care if his head spins because he's the backup. Just call the play, call the offense. It's like the toughest play. Go ahead, just do it. You know, and, and that's what I think. I feel like LaFleur we, we will be, will be free, more free calling the game. Yeah, I can see it. I I could definitely see it, um, especially when when you have a guy like Zach Wilson. And I think Mike LaFleur is just as guilty as this as Wilson is. You want to dial up the deep shots. You want to show off that arm. You want to try and stretch the field, maybe more so than you should, or maybe before it's set up for you to do so. And with Mike White, you're not going to be that eager to be launching bombs downfield. You're going to have to focus more on the quick game. You're going to have to focus more on getting the ball to your playmakers in space. And it might end up being a better game plan with a worse quarterback executing it. And that could be what we end up seeing. Yep. And it could be competitive. Like you said, I'm, I'm skeptical about Mike white. I'm going to be honest. I really am, but I could see the play calling and the rest of our playmakers doing enough to yeah. mitigate Mike white enough to be somewhat competitive. Besides a more, a more freely approach from LaFleur, I feel like it's going to be, he'll be more willing to give the ball on space to Elijah Moore, Michael Carter, et cetera. And then there's going to be a good combo for the jets. A careless LaFleur, in a sense, is going to just call the offense and let White handle it, and he's going to try to get his playmakers involved in space. 